he's worthy. Come on, let's just get a little Selah here, a little rest here. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to. Lord, I love you more than anything. I think that's a good wake up song, a good morning song. One voice, I love you. You forget to tell them today. Lord, I love you oh. more than anything. Come on, you got a lot of things on that list. Hey, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Said I worship I worship and adore you. I just want I just you. Thank you so much, team. Thank you so much, team. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Acknowledge his presence in the sanctuary. We pray.
guys, are we doing all right this morning? Are we on? Let me pray that you are getting uh, our service. We cooking in here. It's hot in here. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And we're magnifying his great name just for who he is. Um, let's welcome our Facebook viewers, our online lurkers. Come on, our online watchers. Let's welcome them in the sanctuary today. sisters and worship team and let's give sister Lucille a hand. Thank you for opening us up today. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is in his holy presence, his holy temple that all the earth be silent before him. Amen. At this time if you can take out your mobile device and um, maybe not here but not here in the sanctuary, not here in the sanctuary but on Facebook and begin to share our page if you can and begin to share our page every time you share the ministry, You're, you are sharing the gospel. 856-462-0075, 856-462-0075. You can connect with us, you can connect with us. If you have never connected with us, please do so this time. Some of you heard it was going to snow, and you said, I ain't even going to tune in on Facebook. I've heard it's going to snow. People, people come up with all kinds of reasons just to stay home. Come on, come on. Even in the snow, uh, God has been good to us, and you can still enjoy ministry through sunshine and rain. Uh, this Tuesday, this Tuesday, 7 p.m., we will continue our Facebook and conference call. We are doing a duality. We are opening up different streams of ministry. Last week, anyone get the word on last Tuesday, we, we preached, uh, is, this, is this your final answer? Is this your final answer? Who do men say that I am? And uh, people were tremendously blessed by that. So this Tuesday, again, we will be hitting you at 7 p.m. There will be no pull up park in prayer on this Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be in the, the high 20s, low 30s on this week. Uh, I promised the Lord, I made a commitment to the Lord that we would start off the year, the first four weeks, that we would start off the year in prayer outside, that we would turn the parking lot into an altar. We did that. Let's give God a praise for his faithfulness and our obedience. Amen, amen. Um, prayer is asking God to do something in heaven and bring it down on earth. It's when we bring the invisible to the visible. So we thank God for your prayers. Today is our each one bring one, our each one bring one service. Now listen, you still have an opportunity to get in on the deal. Each one bring one. So if you're home watching us today, this is for our on, online viewers. Um, just tag someone, tell someone that uh, Pastor Ken Holmes, the Word and Worship Church, some of the family is here, and we want you to jump on in and begin to spread the gospel. Trust me, they wanna hear the word today, they wanna see the worship today. So begin to invite people in, bring them in, bring them in, bring a group in, bring a chat in, bring, bring your friends, bring your family, whoever you can find, get them to our page so they can experience God's word. God wants to speak to you. We do wanna honor, um, on next Sunday, we have our Super Soul Sunday, and we are coming back again. It's our Super Soul Sunday. Amen. Uh, we have Minister Nick Thompson and Reverend Dan Spencer and our very own Reverend Armstead will be bringing the message in a very unique method. Right? So that is our Super Soul Sunday. This will be our second year installing this. So we had, we had a good time last year. Can you believe it's almost been a year? It's almost been a year. We are almost through. Watch this, Ty. We're almost, we're, we're, we're kissing February. Is February tomorrow? All right, we're kissing February, five Sundays in January. So we made it through December. We made it through January, Sherelle. And now we, if we can make it through February, when's, when's spring start? Starts in March. Amen. All right. The sun is getting ready to shine in March. Amen, amen. We do want to um, celebrate all birthdays in the month of January. If you had a birthday in the month of January and Pastor has not acknowledged you yet, um, we waited to the end of the month so we can cover everyone. Anyone in the building? Any birthdays in January? January? No Januarys. All right. All right. Amen. So there wasn't nothing going on in March. Uh, amen. 
nothing. March was, March was quiet. Maybe you're on Facebook today. Just, just text on and say it was my birthday or, or thank you. Or if you want to tell us your age or your stage or your wage, whatever you want to do, just make yourself right at home. Let's give First Lady a hand today. Amen. Thank you, First Lady, for coming out and joining us. Uh, it's good when we can applaud the First Lady who is here with us, and that's all I'm going to say on that. Amen. Amen. This time we're going to go right into our offering. Going into our offering. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is a, a big part of the word and worship service. We give our first fruits. We give what God has given us first. When we give him, watch this, he gives us the, the resource, but he's the source. So we give him our time, we give him our talent, and we give him our treasure. We give him our treasure. He says he loves, what type of giver? A hilarious and a cheerful giver. Money is not bad, money is not good. It depends on, Diane, what we do with our money. It depends on what we do with our money. Uh, so we give the tithe to him so he can bless it. And when he blesses the tithe, he redeems the 90. All right, understand the principle. When I give him, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, giving him as an offering, I, I owe God my tithe. The tithe is what's his, the offering is what's mine, and the offering is what I give. He's our savior, he's our source, and he is our sacrifice. If you're giving by Givelify today, you can hit us at the Word and Worship Church. If you're giving by Givelify, hit us at the Word and Worship Church. If you're giving by Cash App, you can hit us at Word and Worship 7. Word and Worship 7. You can continue to give now, even right now. I want to thank our online givers who have been giving by, by mail. You can mail those checks to 737 West Walnut Road. Make them out to the Word and Worship Church. Amen. God says, I'll open up a window and pour you out a blessing. One day I'll do a teaching on what the window is. Amen. Amen. But let me just give you some, cl some quick cliff notes. You're the window. You're the window. When you get to heaven, you're not going to see windows. You are the window. God says, I'm going to open you up. If you read the text, it says, I will open up I will open, doesn't say up, it says, I will open you a window. God says, you're going to be my reflection. You'll be my windows. And when God, when we give to God, God will open us up to receive a blessing and we will start pouring out to others. Y'all catching this? All right. A window, a window, what, what we reflect, what people can see. When people look at you, they should see the image of Jesus Christ reflecting through you. All right. So I want to pray over your offering. I want to pray over your heart, your hand, your head, the seed, the soil, and the sower. All right. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for activity of our limbs. They, they, they're moving. They're working. We thank you, God, for mobility, Father, of our eyes and our articulators. We thank you, God, for cars, houses, and land and jewelry. We thank you, God, for jobs and employment. Lord, take this check. Take the money. Take the finances, Father. We give it to you. Bless it. Redeem it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Continue to give. Thank you for giving. Continue to give. Greeters are coming at this time. season, Father, be our protector and our guard. Young name we pray. Amen. Amen. He keeps on doing great things for me. He 
even when we're given. He's right on doing great things for me. Come on, team. Doing great things for me. Keeps on doing great things for me. Don't believe it, do you? Oh, 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 oh. He's right on doing, doing great things for me. Grab it in your head. Hey, he keeps he's on doing great things. Doing things. We thank you in advance for your giving. We thank you for your obedience. And we pray that God blesses you real good and that heaven will smile upon you. We're going into one more sermonic selection from our music ministry. And then after that, we will go right into the word of God. Let's receive our worship team.
you like hearing praise I'm talking about you don't you don't you don't you like hearing how good it looks come on don't you don't you like hearing come on how your hair looks don't you like hearing how you play don't you hear come on imagine God who has been created to receive it and we have been created to give it your own worship leader for 45 seconds. Be your own 
to sing his word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth said, oh, how I love to hear the sound. Oh, how I love to hear. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you as we go into our altar call, Father. We come close to the throne. We lay down our burdens. We cast them at your feet. For your word tells us to take all our cares and to carry them, to bring them to you. So any broken hearts out there this morning, any broken minds, any bro broken relationships, 
any scars, any diseases, any sickness, we bring them to you, Father. We take the oil. We take the oil. Thank God for the oil, Father. We apply it to our cars. We apply it to our lives. We apply it even to our appliances, Father. Anything, Father, under the sound of our voice, Father, we apply it to you. Thank you, God. We don't have to beg for the blood. We apply the blood. We have it. It's ours for the using. So, God, we feel you in the house. As we go into the word, we pray that the word will go into us. So, God, right now, we give you our full attention. And if we give you our full attention, you will supersede our every expectation. Let these words today be acceptable in your sight. Guard my mind, my head, my hand, my heart, that we might preach good things only of you. In your name, we pray this blessed prayer. Amen. Come on, just type in your prayer request. If you can, we'll grab them tonight. Because in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. I wish you were here with us on this morning. But we thank God for those who have come out today. Does anyone need a word today? Just type in, I need a word today. If you don't get a word quick, you might wind up driving down Dumbville Road. Anybody ever been on Dumbville Road? Come on, you know where Dumbville Road, you make a quick left, it's called Crazy Lane. Yeah, yeah, but if I don't get a word quick, I might wind up throwing a brick at the wrong person. If I don't get a, get a word quick. Quick, come on, I might take out all my suitcases, right, and just write the note, amen, amen, bye and bye, amen. If I don't get a word, quick. God has a word for you today. I believe he's going to bless you, amen, amen. Give somebody a hand that looks like they need encouragement. Just give someone a hand that looks like they can need, come on, a pat on the back. I know you can't pat them on the back. Come on, just give someone a hand. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. We're getting ready to go in the word of God. We're going to be in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 30, verse number 6. 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 6. I want to thank Junie, and Steve, and Rob for meeting us here on last week. Amen. Setting up. We, we put a lot of time and making sure that we have a, a great service and to make sure that you can receive it with clarity. Um, sometimes people accuse the devil of something the devil has nothing to do with. And sometimes it is the devil. Amen. You got to know when it's the enemy and when it's not the enemy. Amen. So let's not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap a harvest of blessings. Okay. All right, we're going into the word 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Verse six. We are continuing, we are continuing our series called Shift Happens. Amen. And this is our last installment. This is our last installment of Shift Happens. Um, Brother Andre, we pray that you've been blessed by it. We pray that uh, some things have been shifting. Understand that uh, different always seems difficult. But then, Sabrice, after you do different, you wind up saying, you know, that wasn't so bad. But when you hear change, tension abruptly rushes in. We're doing church different. And different seems difficult. But guess what? It ain't so bad. Because shift happens. How many people have said in the last 30 days, you know, shift happens? Shift happens. You got to say it because it happens. Okay, I'm trying to uh, put some new words in your vocabulary. Amen. Amen. God is going to upgrade you from four-letter words to five-letter words. Amen. 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 Grace. G-R-A-C-E. Saved. S-A-V-E-D. Jesus. J-E-S-U. Yes, God's going to give you an upgrade to five letters. Amen. You've been on profanity light. Yes. Amen. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 6. Are we, are we there? 
And David was greatly distressed. Sound like anybody in here? For the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. We leave off this part, his God. Patricia David was feeling distressed, stressed, but he says, I've got to do something. I've got to encourage myself in the Lord. I want to use for a thought today. I need a stimulus check. I need a stimulus check. Just text somebody, you need a stimulus check. Told you if you would bring a guest today, you'd be glad that you did. We are giving out stimulus checks at the Word and Worship Church. Anybody need a st- If you don't want your stimulus check, just give it to me. Because God has something in store for you. Are we ready? Reverend Leonard, the story is told about a very extravagant millionaire who was having a pool party. At the conclusion of the pool party, he met with his crowd at his pool, and he says, ladies and gentlemen, I have an announcement to make. He says, in my hand, I'm holding a check for $100,000. For the individual, the person who will jump in the 12 feet of water and swim to the three feet, I will give this check of $100,000. What he forgot to tell the people is he says, but by the way, there are seven hungry alligators in the pool. He says, let the games begin. He says, going once. Michelle, you couldn't hear any noise. He said, said, going twice. It was so quiet, you could hear a mouse licking cotton. Tell somebody, that's quiet, that's quiet. (laughs) Going three times, still silent. He's getting ready to rip up the check, and out of nowhere he hears, splash! And then you hear Steve the crowd saying, swim, 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 swim! And the brother was swimming from the 12 feet to to the nine feet, to the seven feet, to the four feet to the three foot of water. He he gets up out of the water and the millionaire, surprised, and he walks over to the man. He says, I just got one question for you. He says, I've been doing this fundraiser for years. No one has ever taken my offer. He says, I just got one question. How and why did you do it? And the man said, I just have one question as well. He said, what is it? He said, who pushed me in? Because, Brother Rob, every now and then, you need a stimulus. Something that gives incentive or encouragement to do something. And hope your stimulus check is not going to be in your bank account. It's not going to be in your mailbox. It's not going to be in the White House, but your stimulus check is inside the Word of God. And you need a check up, just not from the neck up, but you got to get your heart involved in this. How are we doing? Anyone really need a stimulus check? Because Brother Junie, let's be honest, we all come across the pit every now and then called discouragement. Depleted. Disappointed. And June, discouragement is not a sin, but it does lead lead us to dark places. Understand that. Discouragement, stress, anxiety, they are not sins, but they lead us to sin. The spirit of discouragement calls for 
a stimulus check. Anybody need to be stimulated by God's word? Come on, be honest. Since March, let's be honest, you don't laugh like you used to. Come on, let's keep it real. You don't smile like you used to. You don't love like you used to. You don't walk like you used to. You don't do your hair like you used to. You don't encourage people like you used to. Because the spirit of discouragement, which is not a sin, but calling me to dark places, I want to tell you today that my assignment is to help you with your doubt, your unbelief, and it's going to be all done through a stimulus check. So ask someone, say, did you get your stimulus check today? Did you get your stimulus check today? God is able. If I don't preach anymore today, I've given you enough to think about. I have a little journey before I get to my destiny in the text, and we're dealing with the lifestyle, the call of David. Everyone remembers David. Okay. Uh, Brother Matt, it's good to see you. We are, we are not dealing with shepherd boy David. And we're not dealing, Reverend Leonard, with King David. David is in a shift, right? Not where I was and not where I should be. Claudine, he's rejected by his family. How many people realize that God specializing in users, he specializes in using people who other people can't stand. God specializes in using people who get on your nerves. God specializes in using people who make you sick. So the next time somebody tells you that they don't like you and don't think much of you, get excited because you have just been added to God's most wanted list. They didn't invite him to the party. They told him, go, go take care of the sheep. Go, 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 go fetch some water. Go, 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 get out of here. You're not available. You're not worthy to be used. But God specializes in using fifth wheels. God specializes in using, come on, come on, the middle child. God specializes in using not enough. David, who's been anointed to be king, is waiting to be king. And David slides outside of God's will. So you have God's perfect will, and you have God's permissive will. But then we, we kind of get shady. We throw our own in. Then we have our personal will. Anybody have their own personal will? You know your personal will. It doesn't line up with God's will, but it, it, it's, it's personal. Uh, Sherelle, David does not like what's going on in the will of God. Because David is being hated, he's being hunted, and he's being haunted. How about those ages? He's hated by Saul, hunted by Saul, haunted by Saul. And whenever, Diane, we do not like what's going on in the will of God, we tend to do the electric slide just a little outside of the will. And David gets outside of the will of God because he's not comfortable with what is going on inside of the will of God. Can I get a witness in the room? So June, we find David, he has slipped over to work with the Philistines. Mm. He's left church, but he hasn't left Christ. 
and he finds himself living in a place called Ziklag. Z-I-K-L-A-G. Ziklag. Everyone say Ziklag. Ziklag is a place that's outside of the will of God, but it's not that far out of the will of God. But listen, out of the will of God is out of the will of God. So he is working with the armies of Philistine. And they have given him an area called Ziklag, which is a place which is called, it's, it's a place that means pressed down. Um, it's a winding road. Some of us are living in a place of Ziklag. It, it's a place where the enemy has made a deal with you and put you on mute. He's muting you. You're not in the will, and I'm out of the will, but I ain't out out the will. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like just, just right here on the board. You're living in, in, in normalcy. Is that a word I'll find out at dinner tonight? Anybody? Living in Ziklag? Come on, Z you know Ziklag is, I don't go to church anymore, but I'm not in the club either. I'm just in Ziklag. Right? I'm not tithing, but I'm not working. Ziklag, right? Don't read my word anymore. But I ain't even watching TV no more. I don't watch Netflix. Is it j just out of the will, but not out, out of the will? I'm just on mute for the last 10 months. Michelle, the time comes for David, he's got to make a vital decision because now Everyone say, here it is. Here it is. It means something's interesting is getting ready to happen. He has now been given orders that the armies of Philistine are getting ready to fight Saul and the armies of Israel. So David now has the opportunity to kill the thing that's been trying to kill him. What do you do when you can't kill what's trying to kill you? Lucille, three things happened at the cross. Some things were killed, some things were changed, some things continued. It's a picture of salvation. At the cross, the penalty of sin was killed. I'm preaching. At the cross, Andre, there was a change because the power of sin is changing. But at the cross, there was also something that continued, the presence of sin. How many people have some things in your life when you receive Jesus Christ, he killed some things? He killed them. Come on, yeah. I don't do that no more. Have no desire, no taste. But how many people also know, Claudine, there are some things that he did not kill, he changed. He's working on them. Come on, working on them. And I know I'm not going to get no claps right here. But watch this, Tamika, there are some things, come on, that, that he, he didn't kill, he didn't change, he has let continue. And you just as mean as you were in 84. There are some things, Vern, in our life that God has just allowed to continue. And come on, you have grown here and you have killed this, but you are still on the same exact level that you've been because some things are continuing. And Michelle, Saul is one of those cases with David. Uh, he can't kill him. He's not changing. And he's continuing. And now David has to make a decision. Am I going to fight and kill my anointed leader who, who hates me? And Matt, as they're going to battle, very interesting, the chief in command of the armies of the Philistine looks at David and says, we don't want you fighting in this war with us because we don't trust you. Now we often talk about, Kendall, we often talk about can God trust you? I'm gonna ask you a profound question. Can the enemy trust you? Can the enemy trust you? Hmm. Can the enemy trust you to tear up the church? Can the enemy trust you to spread gossip? 
Can the enemy trust you to ruin relationships? Can the enemy trust you to steal from the Lord? Can the enemy trust you? Chief in command says, David, we don't want you in this. He says, I know you, David. You're the, you're the giant killer. You're the one they wrote that song about. We're going to get to the front line, and you're, gonna, you're supposed to shoot Saul. You're going to change that gun and blow all of us away. Go back to Ziglag. Do you know that there are some things that God will not let you do? Even when I get outside of the will, God will pull up a barrier and say, oh, but you can't do that. Come on. There, there are some places the enemy's not going to let you go. Come on. You can't go to every club because you're going to go in and you're going to start prophesying. You're going to start evangelizing. They're going to leave the pole and come to the pulpit. And come on. Start, instead of dropping it like it's hot, they're going to start praise dancing like he's holy. Come on. There are some places you can't go to. The enemy not going to allow you to get to because you're too anointed and he understands your gift and he'll send you back to Ziklag. Come on. I've done more than I could have, but praise the Lord, not all that I should have. So David's got to go back to Ziglag. And when David gets back, he finds that the city of Ziglag that he has built, he finds that his family, his children, his resources, all he has left is a pile of smoke. Understand that. He was way out of the wheel. And then he gets a little bit closer, still out of the will. Understand this. Um, when you are outside of the will, it will cause other people harm. Because hope, being outside of the will works for a season. And being outside of the will may be very successful for you, but you're going to leave some other areas in your life unprotected. And while David was away from home, the, Am the Amalekites are attacking his family, his resources, and now he has nothing left. If you can look at your Bible, 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse 4 and 5 on your own, it'll tell you exactly what happens. And now they are plotting, watch this, Sabrice, they are plotting now to kill David. The people who worked with him, the people who traveled with him, now are so distraught. The Bible says, Patricia, when they got back to Ziklag, that they cry until they had no more strength to cry. Pillowcases were drenched. Kleenex boxes were empty, bags under their eyes, their eyes were red, they had cried their last tear, and they came to the point where they had this meeting, and watch this tide, they say, let's stone David. Because whenever leaders make mistakes, the people who are traveling with you will now start coming up with conspiracy theories, that's what they are, to take you out. What's interesting, Steve, is they want to stone David. Have they forgot what David can do with one stone? You, you, you want to stone me? Do you know what I can do with one stone? But thank be to God that you cannot, watch it, you cannot respond to every attack. And there's some people who will accuse you and bring you down. They don't even know who they're messing with, but you've got to put it in neutral. And you've got to show a spirit of weakness, a spirit of meekness, a spirit of humility, and say, you don't even know what I can do with a stone. Talking about y'all gonna stone me. You better ask Goliath. Tell somebody, David's coming, David's coming, David's coming. The people were greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, and every man for his sons and daughters. But David encouraged himself and the Lord. Notice Reverend Leonard does not say, but David took out his sling. <laughs> and by the way, these 600 men are, who are following him, they're has-beens, they're riff rats, there's leftovers. These are people that no one wants. David invested in these men. These are nobodies. David invested in these troops and he built them up to be a successful army and now they got a nerve. They're having secret meetings. Let's stone them. There's so much meat in that if I was doing a leadership class. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. My first point. Get alone with God. Somebody say, 
check. It's your first check. Get alone with God. The text says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Uh, King James says he strengthened himself. Because Steve, David has a major, major decision to make in his life. And you never want to make a major decision when you are messed up. So he says, before I make a major decision, I need to strengthen myself, not, not by Netflix, not by Hodge and Dodge, come on, not by sex, not by drugs. I need to encourage myself in the Lord. Before you ever make a major decision, you need to halt. Let me tell you what HALT stands for. Come on, you need to ask yourself, HALT, am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? Because if you're hungry, never make a destiny decision. Never go to ShopRite when you... Never make a decision when you're angry. How many people have ever made a decision when you're angry and you call them back and say, I didn't mean what, yes, you did. You meant exactly what you said. Never make a major decision when you're lonely. How many times, fellas, have you been lonely? And you said, I wonder who I can text. Sisters, how many times you went through your phone and you said, he ain't even that cute, but he ain't even saved. How many people have ever made a decision when you're tired? You know you can't afford the car, but you've been in that office so long looking at paper, you like that. You don't read nothing. You just start signing and checking and signing and signing. Amen? David said, I need to encourage myself. I got to get alone with God. You know, there's sometimes I just want to be alone with Michelle. Sometimes she just wants to be what? Just alone with me. Come on, when we're distressed and things, just want to be alone. So I go to God with some big things. And when I go to God with big things, God can give me big answers. I go to God, even not just with big things, but I can go to God with little things, small things. And God can give me answers to small things. You have someone in your life who um, you just make small talk with? Anybody? Small talk. But Brother Mike, there's some people that when I call, this is what they say, what's wrong? Because they know they are my big item. They know that they are my big ticket person to call. And, and, and not only when I call them, they say, what's wrong? This is what they say. You've been on my heart. You've been on my mind. God says, come to me with the big, the medium, and the little. And David said, I had to strengthen myself in the Lord. Listen. You got to get alone because crowds and noise and hurry will distract you. And David's got a major decision. He's got to make a major decision. He has just lost everything, and the people who are with him are going to stone him. He needs to get strengthened. He needs a stimulus check. I want to I talk to someone who, who needs to get alone because there's too much clutter. And right now, you have, you have the same one imagination that's dominating your head. It keeps flying around your mind. Keeping you up all night. Losing sleep, you're losing weight, your hair's falling out. Come on, you kick, you kick the dog, you spit in the fish tank. Come on, you burn the toast, you punch the wall. Come on, you drop the eggs. It's this one mind, it's this one thought. You go to sleep, you wake up, you got a green light. Anybody? This one thought that's bringing you down. Anybody ever dealt with a fly in the room? Now, um, I got a degree in flyology. I, I, uh, Michelle gave it to me. Michelle gave me the degree. It's on my wall. Okay. Um, and, and when there's a fly in the house, everyone knows to call dead. To call dead. Right? All right. Right. 
when, 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 when there's a, a, a dog in the yard, they call mom, right? But for the flies, I take care of the flies. <laughs> and, and, and Dre, this is what I do when there's a fly. This is what I do. You zooming in on me, Jimmy? You got to get there. I close the doors, isolate everything. Y'all been there? Somebody get me a. You, you know how it's done. You gotta, you gotta locate that thing, cast down the imagination. But Lucille, after you cast down imaginations, the Bible says, then you've got to take every thought captive because sometimes you kill the fly, and I say this to Michelle, did I get it? Because after you cast it down, you've got to take every thought captive because my girls need to see the evidence. I just can't say I got it. and They, don't, they need to see it in the tissue. Take every captive, take every thought captive, put it in the toilet, just didn't kill it, we drown it, let the kids see, flush it, bye. Now I have peace. But there's one more step open, June, because what you cast out, you've got to replace with something that's greater. So now I need to replace the negative thought with a positive thought to say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the toilet. Come on. Ain't this good? But you got to be able to get alone. Point number two. Everyone say, get alone with God. You got to get aligned with God. Oh, yes. Uh, he encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And everyone say, my God. Even when I'm outside of the will, guess what? He's still my God. He does not stop becoming my God even when I'm outside of the will. David said, even though I fall, I fall in his hand. I'm not yet utterly cast down or destroyed because I fall into his hand. So Tamika, even though I'm outside of the will, he's still my God that I'm able to talk to. And because the goodness of God leads to repentance. It does not say repenting leads to God's goodness. The goodness of God, has anybody ever blessed you and you got, and you got convicted? You talked about me like a dog, and then I came over and, and washed your car and painted your house. You were like, oh, Lord. Because the goodness of God leads me to change. So he says, I need to get aligned with God. Because if I'm just alone with Michelle, but we're not aligned, then I become lonely. And there's a difference between being alone and lonely. And Diane, there's one thing that pastor cannot stand, and that's being with someone and still being lonely. They're not a friend like the lonely. No, it's lowly, goofballs, not lonely. They've been singing lonely, Jesus. Jesus ain't lonely. He's lowly. <laughs> if I'm alone with Michelle, but we're not aligned, 
then what's the purpose of being alone? I want to be aligned with her so we can enjoy each other's alone time, even if we're just together and not touching. We're just, come on, come, we're just talking. But Rob, when I am not aligned, I start to, anyone ever have a car that was ha needed a, 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 not a wheel alignment, but I need a wheel alignment. I need to, because I'm, I'm drifting. Come on, you know that car, it just, it pulls you over here. You ain't way, way over, but you, you drifting. And the reason you're drifting, Lucille, is because I cannot see God and I cannot hear God, so I begin to drift, and I need a wheel alignment. Um, I'm going to date myself, Matt, but uh, anybody remember the movie, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Anybody? Anybody? Uh, you have the mad scientist that goes into the lab, and uh, the thing that he loves the thing that motivates him, the thing that encourages him, the thing that, 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 that gives him a stimulus. He shrunk, right? And Michelle, when he shrunk the kids, he could no longer see them. He could no longer hear them because he, he shrunk the thing that was there to help him. Are y'all catching this? Is, is it possible, is it possible, Reverend Leonard, that sometimes during COVID season that we have shrunk God? And, 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 and we no longer see him, and we no longer feel him, and, and our other problems have magnified, and we can't even see God because, honey, I done shrunk the Lord. And I need to find him. But Brother Junie, the next year they came out with part two. Honey, we shrunk ourselves. Because sometimes the word, somewhere in the word says, I got to decrease, so he must increase and I've got to humble myself and when I humble myself I'll start to lean on him depend on him trust him but brother Mike they had part three honey we blew up everything come on this is going to be the year that we magnify God the year that we blow him up the year that we make him clear, the year that we make him credible, the year that we'll praise him in season and out of season, because when the praises go up, the prices come down. This is going to be the year that I call those things that be not as if they were. This is the year that I'm going to get out the boat. I'm going to walk on what was worrying me. This is going to be the year that God is not going to blow me up. I'm going to blow him up. And when I blow him up, I will receive the benefits. You got to get along with God. You got to get aligned with God. Point three, I'm going to drink my water. You got to go along with God. Got to go along with him. David calls for the ephod. It's a breastplate. He says, go get me the ephod. This is this is his prayer closet. This is his Bible. This is his point of reference of reach. This is where he makes contact with the Lord. And the text says, then David asked the question. Here's the question. Drew. He says, should I chase after these raiders? And question number two is what? Will I catch them? So hope the quest, two questions. He says, first question, Lord, should I chase them? Second question, will I catch them? I get alone with God. I'm getting aligned with God so I can go along with God. In other words, Jude, I'm going along now. There's some times when I want to be with Michelle privately, but how many people know there's some times where I want to be with Michelle publicly? All right? All right? The problem is if you want to be with someone publicly, but you don't want to be aligned with them, and you don't want to be alone with them. Anybody know anybody like that? Come on. Y'all have a good outside relationship, but there's no alignment, and there's never no alonement, but y'all always going along. That's that religious relationship we have with Jesus Christ. I have the form of godliness, watch this Steve, but I deny the power thereof because I have no alone time, I have no alignment, but I'm always going along. 
So Maya, David says, Lord, should I chase it? Because it's possible, Michelle, to chase things that God has not called you to chase. Because you never sought the Lord. You responded out of your feelings. You wanted revenge. You wanted to get back at your sister. Your sister bought a new house, so you had to buy a new house. You got tired of hearing about your sister's new house every time y'all went to Thanksgiving, and everyone else was getting married, so you had to get married, and everyone else was having kids, so you had to have kids. And, and what happens is you start chasing your feelings, and you forgot to check out God's stimulus package. There's been some times, Sabrice, I've chased some things, and then I caught what I shouldn't have chased. And now I'm trying to ask God, God, get rid of what I caught. And God says, stop praying to get rid of it and start praying how should you raise it? Because you shouldn't have chased it and now I caught what I chased and now I'm getting chastening. Go along with God. Let's look at what God says. God says what? Yes, go after them. Now, New Living Translation says this. King James says it a little different. New Living Translation, Junie says, go after them and you will recover all. New Living Translation does not say you will catch it. It says, chase it and you will recover. Don't get more interested in the destiny than you do the journey. See, the journey, Vernon, is chasing it. The destiny is catching it. God says there's going to be some things I'm going to allow you to chase, but you might not catch, but you will recover all. This is the year to recover. Yet chase it because God says I am a rewarder for those who chase me. You don't have to, you don't have to connect with me. Just chase me. I am a rewarder for those who diligently seek me, seek me, chase me. I didn't say find me. Just, just search for me and I will bless you like you've never been blessed before. Be honest, Cecile, you have chased some things. Come on, there's some things in your life that God says, I don't want you chasing that. You've got to know what to chase and what do I give a benediction to. You need to have the gift of hang up. You always the last one on the phone. Come on, you still there? You have to have the gift of may the Lord watch between me and thee. God says, Chase it. Not going to guarantee you're going to catch it, but I am going to guarantee you're going to recover all of it. Tell somebody, God said, chase it. Chase it. Come on, chase it. Come on, chase the job. Chase it. Ch chase the business. Chase it. Ch chase the dream house. Chase it. Chase forgiveness. Chase it. Chase it. Chase it. God said, chase it. Chase it. They might not ever forgive you. Chase it. Chase it. You might not get the house. Chase it. Do you know how many times I got no, but I was blessed off of the no because God said, do it? 2007, I went and met with Mr. Bernie, the richest man in Vinland, New Jersey, and said, God said, that bank is my building, and he called security on me and kicked me out of his office. And now every time I ride by that building, I'm holding the hands to this one. And Vernon, I'm saying, how in the heck were we going to have church in the DMV building? It blows my mind. But I was obedient. And he says, chase it. You might not catch it, but you're going to recover all. And you're going to recover. Watch this. Everyone say, here it is. You're going to recover what you lost. You're going to recover more than you lost. And you're going to be able to recover to give to the lost. I got to say that one more time. You're going to recover what you lost. You're going to recover more than you lost. And you're going to be able to recover and start giving to the lost. The least, the last, and the lost, God is going to make you the blessing. Not because I caught it, because I chased it. Chase it, chase it, chase it. If God says chase it, chase it. You need a stimulus check. You need to get alone with God. You need to get aligned with God. You need to go along with God. And when those three things happen, you can get answers from God. And you're going to get yourself back. You're going to get your stuff back. And you're going to get your service back. 
because God says you are going to recover all. When you discover, God says, I'm going to uncover, and God says, I'm going to let you recover. Whew. When you discover it, God says, I'm going to cover it. You got to discover what you need to cover so you will know what to recover. God said, you discover it, I will cover it, and I will allow you to recover it. God is going to give you yourself back in 2021. You're going to get your smile back. You're going to get your joy back. You're going to get your peace back. You're going to get your self-esteem back. You're going to get your character back. You're going to get your integrity back. You're going to get your stroll and your roll back. You're going to get your pep and your step back. You're going to get your stride and your glide back. You're going to get your smile back. You're getting your nails done. You're getting your hair done. Come on, you're getting your credit card done. I am getting myself back. But not only am I going to get myself back, I said not only am I going to get myself back, but I'm going to get my stuff back. Tell somebody I'm getting it back. I'm getting my stuff back. I'm getting my kids back. I'm getting my family back. Getting my money back. Getting my job back. Getting my breathing back. Getting my house back. Getting my man back. Getting my job back. I'm getting my stuff back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he is the God of the stimulus. He's the God of recovery. He's the God, not of a second chance, but of another chance. David was in Ziglag for 16 months. And while he's being obedient over here, June, Saul gets killed over there. He never had to lift a finger to kill what he could not kill. Someone else killed it for him. While he's being obedient, God is making a way. And he gets a report. Saul is dead. He's not happy. He's not shouting. But now he knows that that window of opportunity, come on, has just got very small and he's getting ready to walk through it and he's now going to be the next king of Israel. Because God says you're going to get yourself back. You're going to get your stuff back. You're going to get your service back. You're going to be back in the church. You're going to be back worshiping. You're going to be back serving. You're going to be back encouraging people. Because all you needed to do was to get a stimulus check. And you've been waiting for Trump. You've been waiting for Nancy Pelosi, you know, no disciples, but you know her, amen. Uh, you've been waiting for, uh, what's the vice president's name, the sister? I know her name, you, like, you better know her name, Pastor. You've been waiting for Kamala, come on, you waiting for Biden? And the stimulus check is not in the White House. Stimulus check is not in the mailbox. Stimulus check is not in your bank account. Stimulus check is in the Lord. And Jesus says, I am the Word. The Word is made flesh and dwelt among us. Stimulus check is in getting alone with God. Anyone need some alone time? Come on. Stimulus check is in getting aligned with God. Stimulus check is getting along with God. If you do these things, I believe in 2021, God says, you're going to recover all. Not a little bit. You're going to recover all and then some. Well, I'm out of minutes and moments, but I'm not out of ministry, I'm not out of message. This is the word for the people of God. One more final question. Did you get your stimulus check? Maybe there's someone in the room today. You've been discouraged and distraught, disgusted, depleted. You're in debt. You're not yourself. 
David said, I can relate. 3,000 years ago, David has a testimony that we can use today. When we get in the Word, the Word gets inside of us. Maybe you're on Facebook today. You say, wow, Pastor, I needed this Word so much. I've been down and out. I told you I went through a season of of discouragement where I had to drive, I had to call a taxi cab to come to my bedroom to drive me to the bathroom. Amen. Amen. It, it, you get that bad where you don't want to move, you don't want to get up, you don't want to wash, you don't want to talk to anybody, you don't want to look in the mirror. God says we're going to recover. Let's stand all over the house. If you want to know Jesus as your personal Savior, I would, would beseech you, let's get back inside of the will of God. You could be so close, so close. And you say, Pastor, I'm really not, not that far, I'm not that bad. Come on, get in, God's, get in God's will that he has. You're anointed. You're anointed to be something. You're anointed to be a prince, a princess, a queen, a king. Let's get out of Ziglag, and we're going back to Israel where we can rule and reign. Repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person on this line. I pray for every person on this feed. If they need faith, give them faith. If they need strength, give them strength. If they need peace, give them peace. And when I'm done praying, I pray that they will make the right decision at the right time, that they will go to the Lord, that they will grab their ephod and ask God, God, what should I do? Thank God for the stimulus check. Amen. I need a savior in my life, and God says I'm the one for the job. He wants to save you right now, ladies and gentlemen. He wants to save you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Come on, give me your beady eyes. I'm talking to you. He wants to speak into your life. Come on, come out of that rut. Come out of, come out of that dark place. Come out of that funk. Come out of it. Come out, come out, come out, come out wherever you are. God wants to hold you and hug you. He says, get alone with me. Come on, get alone with me. I'm your God. I'm a God of another chance, not of a second chance. Call his name now. He'll answer you. God answered his prayer. God says, this is how we're going to move and this is how we're going to do it. I need a savior. Jesus is my sacrifice, my substitute, my soon coming king. I believe that he came, that he died, that he'll get up again, that he's gotten up again on the third day, that he's coming back to receive his children. There's some things he'll kill, there's some things he'll cut, there's some things he'll change, some things he'll continue. His arms are open wide. Amen, 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 amen. Maybe you came in late today. Let's give God a praise, but maybe you came in late today. And Maybe you didn't have a chance to give, or maybe you want to rethink about what you want to give because God spoke to you in a definite way and he's given you confirmation. I want to encourage you to give at this moment. You can give through Givelify, you can give through Cash App. Um, the information should be on the screen. Amen. If you don't want to give today, you can continue to give all week long. We put a lot of time into the Word of God to present it to you, and we pray that it connected. We pray that it connected in spirit and in truth. Well, did you receive anything from God today? Amen. We will see you on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. for our Tuesday night teaching. We are getting ready to sign off. We pray that God will give you the desires of your heart. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless your Facebook. We love you. We'll see you next Tuesday.